This is Nan Teinberg of the Palm Springs Public Library's Local History Project. I am indeed privileged to be here today with Dr. Grace and Winfield Line. The Lines had spent a fascinating life before they moved here to Palm Springs more than 40 years ago and continue to lead a fascinating life. We are in the Lines' home, their original home that they bought more than 40 years ago here in Palm Springs, and today's date is February 7, 1987. I'm going to start with Dr. Grace, and uh, you, you and Wynn met in, at the University of Michigan in the 20s, but let's go back to your early days in Korea and uh, talk about that. Your, your father was a businessman who uh, developed a hospital, and that's what got yes. you interested in medicine. Well, uh, yes, he uh, thought that, see, what they call Korean medicine. Mm -hmm. They believe in herb and it was very successful, but uh, uh, he uh, wanted a Western way, much more developed. Uh, so that's how he built the hospital, I think. Right this was in the See, 19 in teens. Oh. Yes, yeah, somewhere around 19... 18, maybe. Right. And the yeah, Japanese were still in Korea at that yes, time. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Let me show this uh, picture. If we can capture this picture, and you might want to uh, explain mm -hmm. your family members. I think this is yeah. a wonderful picture. Well, he, he uh, said that he wrote to me he was building American home. See, a uh, uh, Korean home is... Uh, uh, well, you have seen some of them, but yeah. so this was a granite dressed and a heavy, but I think he had an idea he liked to turn that over hospital because oh, I, I finished, uh, yes. Jan, uh, here is a picture of that yeah, home that's and what members of the family scattered around. Oh my, yeah. uh, in this, this is your, we'll, we'll look at that later. This is your, uh, mother. these are your family, this yeah. is your family. Here. That's uh, my mother. Yes. And, and uh, that's a little sister, unfortunately, uh, died. And this is my brother. And uh, we were all sent to, you see, you, uh, they didn't have, uh, other than just m maybe normal uh, co a college, mm -hmm. a standard. Sure. It's a missionary, yes. did a good work. But yes. uh, so we were all, uh, a father sent us to Japan. I see. Uh, except my older sister, poor sister had to get married to my mo mother. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mother was a typical uh, Korean yes. style. Right. Father constantly, a Western. Very yes. yes, and yes. Uh, so. Um, and where and, uh, are you? Uh, this one. That's what I thought. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, and so we were all sent to Japan and to be educated. Yes. And the uh, medical school is uh, the Tokyo Joshinako, they call it. Uh, and uh, uh, how many uh, students? Well, I, uh, you've told me, I forgot, there were maybe 1,700 yes. students started in college. Yes. and. Uh, about 150 actually graduated. I yeah. think we should mention that you got your medical degree by the age of 20. Is that correct? It would be before that, even. Before yes, you were 20. I yeah. think. Uh, and what, you were also uh, part of the freedom movement in Korea, the youth freedom movement yeah, in Korea. It's a, yes, I see. It was uh, under Japan. And right. uh, Japanese and Co Korea had a uh, 4,700 years of a history yeah. behind it, yes. but uh, uh, didn't believe in this uh, modern way. While Japan and has uh, taken the uh, uh, everything and the modern, and it is we didn't have a gun, we didn't have uh, anything to fight with. See, Korea, uh, they had a sufficient. Uh, uh, to feed uh, people, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, gold mines, and uh, everything they need was there. Mm -hmm. So, but Japan, unfortunately, is an island, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they accepted uh, Western education and so on, and they needed uh, to uh, develop their own. I see. 
yes, instead of natural right. resources. Yes. And uh, that, would, that would have to been all right. Uh, see, they saw Korea was a very rich country. Yes. And yes. Resources. they, yeah, resources. And, uh, but the uh, first thing they did, two, what was it, a hundred and so many. Yeah, yeah. over a hundred of the leaders. Leaders, put them in jail, tortured. Yes. Uh, they wanted to kill, but they, instead of, uh, they didn't want to be accused as a killing, but see, I was in prison. Right. A and uh, tortured. I'm, yes, I'm and uh, I even now, uh, only he could stand it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, jump, uh, you know, and uh, is that but what led you to come to the United States? Yes. Yes. Experience? If I if I ever yes. get out of this jail, uh, and I go to the United States, and where so is a free and believe in free, and uh, uh, so, but uh, uh, only college uh, was recognized because the Japanese controlled everything. Yes. And so my father. Uh, there, the, that building is really home, but uh, he intended to turn to a hospital. I see. And then send me to Tokyo yes. at a, a yes. medical school. A and uh, believe it or not, I think our class alone was uh, 280. So you see, Japan uh, wanted to have a Western. Uh, med medicine right. and, uh, and a woman so at that that was a yes very yeah the, the yes because phenomenon. uh, uh, the uh, uh, president was a Japanese woman right. and uh, she was educated by government and uh, I think they sent her to I don't know maybe Russia they uh, Japanese right. didn't like United States right. anybody who has been in Tokyo, uh, you expect to be in jail. Wow. Yeah, yes. and uh, so... Um, when Mrs. Lyons graduated, she was given a diploma which uh, entitled her to practice in anywhere in the Orient, including India and Turkey. Mm. But she wasn't interested in well, medicine, she found Exactly, out. so you... I, you I went into public health. Right. The I University of Michigan, help. and you got a BS degree, and you got your doctorate in public health. Yes, yes. Which so was well, I didn't extremely advanced at that time because you uh, were interested in preventive well, medicine. And yes, preventive. And yeah. health, and vitamins, and yes, it was wellness, kind of and <laughs> all that we're talking well, about now. Well, best part is I picked him up. And you, okay, <laughs> picked him up on the campus. Where you picked up. <laughs> <laughs> Winfield Line, yeah. and we'll go to you now and ask about your background, how you got to the University of Michigan, and well, starting uh, with, I think, your story of graduation from high school. Yes. Uh, I was born in Lyonsville, Pennsylvania, named uh, after a great-great-grandfather, and then we moved to, Mich to Howell, Michigan, and so the University of Michigan was the natural place. But the day we graduated from high school, my brother and I set out on foot uh, with the resolve that we would never sleep in a hotel, that we'd, we promised our folks we'd never catch a freight train, and that we would visit every state in the Union before we returned home in 13 months later that we planned. And this was 19... That was 1922 and 1922 23. And 23. Mm -hmm. Then we started in the university and uh, we found that our trip had uh, not only we had earned enough working in the silver lead mines and punching cattle and different harvest, lattice harvest and all those things, money which we sent home and we traveled broke most of the time. And we were hungry often, but it just helped us to go ahead and get a job somewhere and get something to eat. But when we got home at the university, uh, we couldn't sleep uh, in a bed for a while. We never slept yes. in a bed on our 13 months, so we'd go out along the boulevard and roll up in our blankets. And gradually, as winter came along, uh, we learned that we could sleep in a bed. <laughs> but this was, in, in effect, the beginning of not only your wanderlust, but your ability to 
you you appreciated your environment and nature and yes didn't and you and your brother collect items or, or you wrote well your we stories wrote and, uh, and as we traveled and we would stop and spend a half a day in the library writing and looking up things in the library that we had already seen maybe on the desert maybe it was a Gila monster we wanted to know more about it we go to the library and we would write and send home mm -hmm. every week we would send home a package of writing and letters to be saved for us when we got back and of course eventually mm -hmm. you both were writers and lecturers. Not, um, I'm not a writer. Not, I'm not well, right. you Francis Lyne, Wynne and his brother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is, this is well, where he Well, he made a, a, really made an avocation of, of it. Uh, he has been one, he was voted the top lecturer in the United States at one time, but it's awful hard work. Every night he had to be away. <laughs> he, 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 he uh, <laughs> lecture better. Oh, no, no. Yes. Uh, then <laughs> little Francis wonderful to have a like good me. wife to push you. No, that's a... Do you well, think that I built the museum single-handed? <laughs> I never did that. I think that's... Well, he's very uh, supportive of uh, each other. He, uh, you, he, you've done, yes, done a lot. Mm -hmm. You met at the University of Michigan and you married in 1928. 1928. Mm -hmm. And... Because I graduated medic in Japan. Yeah. That's the right. only place right. that you could go. Right. And, uh, and you had so received that by then your doctorate in public health. She hadn't Michigan. received it oh, yet. No. Not yet. So we we worked together on I the see. thesis because her English is lacking somewhat. He wrote it. Well, I had a permission. It was her yeah, ideas, but I just not ideal put it only. Me, but uh, I had a whole. The yeah, university was uh, yeah. wonderful. They gave me anything I wanted to see I, I was experimenting with, with the white rats, rats. <laughs> right. and uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, uh, but I had a permission that it's my work he was a Christian scientist mm -hmm. but he got to be my work in medicine <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, now what brought they, you to Palm Springs 15 I years became later. A, I, I <laughs> became very ill we were um, you know, Japanese had cut off all the communications my family, with my family. I thought they were all dead. Uh, she and was, at the governor's request, she was teaching uh, ROTC Japanese boys. to ROTC boys. Mm -hmm. She wrote her own text. The Navy had a text, but it was not sufficient. She wrote her own textbook, and she uh, taught ROT they could use. ROTC boys. So if they were captured, they would be able maybe to interrogate a prisoner or on their own behalf to know what was going on and maybe facilitate an escape or something yes. of that nature. They, they only the very best students were allowed oh, to yeah. take the course. And they were too. And she yeah. broke down oh, yeah. in the health. So that's why we came to Palm Springs in 1943. Mm. I couldn't walk a block. I had to sit down and rest. Now, yeah, had and, you uh, been, excuse so me, had you been when to this area exactly uh, during your travels after high school? Had you been to this, the Coachella Valley Desert, or I don't you were well, familiar with the California yes, Desert? Yes, uh, during our, our hike around the United States, we were two or three months on these deserts. Oh, yes. And so you knew what, where you were We going. knew the deserts, yes. and we knew them from the ground up. And as I mentioned, we... When we went back to university after a couple of years, the wanderlust got us again. We yes. set on foot to go around the world, right. but that has nothing to do with Palm yeah. Springs. <laughs> well, Grace was ill, and that mm. is, in a way, how you found this house yes. and bought it. Mm. Uh, if you'd like to describe the story of yeah. well, seeing when the house we, where we're when we right. arrived in Palm Springs or in. California. We had meant to go to Dallas, but that time planes were scarce and even rail, uh, railroad cars were scarce. And we did get a um, sleeper to Dallas, and then they said we could go on if we wanted to to California. It opened up a vacancy. So we came on. We told my father, who lived in Aladina, that 
Grace had to have some place where she is warm, and we thought we might try La Jolla. He says it's better if you go to the desert. So we came down here and we got a room for a week in a motel or hotel. After that, I started to look around before our week was up, and we found this house. Uh, the woman brought us here, and uh, we met the owners. They were from Los Angeles, and uh, we didn't like it at first because it was all sand out in front, but <laughs> yes. when we got in, we had a rose garden in the mountains, and we were better impressed. And so next day, that was on a Sunday, we came back, and we bought the house, and Monday we moved in. <laughs> yes, that must have been the fastest yeah. sale of yeah, the, the real estate well, venture uh, in the history we, of the uh, Springs. This thing may come an executive said, I think I can trust you. You know, we didn't go through escrow even. Yeah, okay. we didn't have money then <laughs> <much> either. <laughs> well, we had I to mean, get the money from the right, east, right, and yeah. so they did yeah. turn the house over. Uh, uh, they took the their Cadillac, like? Haberbosch, they yeah. took their Cadillac. I tried to get them to leave it. They left everything else. <laughs> 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 but, but they, they wouldn't leave it. <laughs> Uh, they were wonderful when people. When was the house built? Was it built? It was built seven years early, so it'd be 51 years old now. Yeah. See, there isn't anything we did other than just saying clothes. They left their silverware, yes. their linen, their pictures, their yes. books, everything. <laughs> they just left. And so when we started piling stuff, there wasn't much room for us. <laughs> And you have been here ever since, and you have yeah. entertained and visited with fascinating people. We've over the had last some 40, wonderful friends in forty Boston. years. Yeah. Uh, your interest this this leads us to your interest in the Desert Museum, the yes. very early stages of the museum, which was basically a, a museum for natural history. That's what it started. And mm -hmm. most of the people you associated with were part of the museum, and they were also people that Grace was helping in terms of consultation. A few of them, yes. uh, after we became friends, she helped them health-wise. On a consultant yes. basis, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of, Gr Grace has a wonderful description of Cornelia White, whom you knew very well. Yes, and would you, would you like to describe Cornelia White? Well, I think White? you could do oh, better. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, of course, as you know, she always uh, wore, wore these puttees, and she once told Grace that uh, I don't believe I should go to church because I think of... I don't have a dress, she, she said, said. She didn't have a dress, yeah. but she felt that way, but she never wore anything else. And uh, she, when I was president, she came to Grace and said, do you suppose your husband could help build a museum? Yes, no. President of the board and of the yes the uh, thought was that it'd be better to wait till she passed because she wasn't in good health, but actually she wanted the museum built on the valuable land. land she had contributed. Yes. She wanted it built at that time now, yes. and so uh, she and Grace became pretty well acquainted, and uh, Grace was able to help her health-wise, which I think extended her life. A number of years, and we took frequent trips out on the desert with her, uh, hiking. We'd drive out to some point where the flowers were very profuse, and then just get out and hike. And I took quite a few movies. Maybe some of that footage might be of value to you. I I'm don't sure know. It would. We yes. could show it to you sometime. Absolutely. And so, and then she would have us come up to her ranch up uh, above Banning, up in the mountains, and uh, we, she gave Grace many gifts in appreciation of what Grace had done for her, and we, we it, really. valued her as a very dear friend. Yes. And well, you had a lot uh, in common, your love of the desert and appreciation yes. of the environment, mm -hmm. which she We knew so her sister, did. Mrs. Chase, mm -hmm. but not as well. Mrs. Yes. Chase was not that as was Isabel, interested. Isabella, I believe, white. Uh, yes, uh, Florilla was, was the, the doctor. doctor yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Jay Smeaton Chase was her husband's name, yes. and we have books that he wrote. He was a he, he was, was a, a lover of the desert, all right. right. I don't know if she ever got into it as much, not as much as Cornelia. Yes, 
you uh, were very close with Earl Hoover and his family. Yes. Uh, Hoover's yes. name appears in this Maybe we can guest book. show that book. This is, this is a, a most valuable guest book. Maybe if you can lift it up and we can get it on <laughs> yes, camera. We, we can look at just some well, of these names. No, uh, Hoover's name is not there, but... Uh, this, this I, you can't it's read. yellowed with age, no, but we can <laughs> yeah. talk about some of these yeah. names. Mm -hmm. You were uh, close with the Harmels? Yes. And they were associated with the desert, yes. uh, with the museum uh, as well? They were not associated yeah. too much with the museum, although uh, they were contributors. The Barney Wurlitzer, the music people, yes. uh, he came over here one day and knocked on our door and yes. handed me a thousand dollar check for the museum, so uh, they yeah. were they were good backer ups of well, the, the they desert were museum. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, here uh, they needed something like they see uh, young folks who could go to uh, where they could drink, and uh, it's too bad. But uh, that's about elderly people. They don't feel good, so they came here. You mean they came to your home? No, 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 no Palm Springs. Palm Springs, I Yeah, see. but there, yes. at the time, mm -hmm. there, isn't, there wasn't any uh, place uh, particularly uh, uh, going and lecture. Or they, they liked to, but the, I guess... Oh, yes, uh, this was yeah, the, the uh, place one form and of us, entertainment yeah. and for yeah, that's cultural right. interest yes. and, and certainly interest in that's the, in what, the environment. That's uh, what, because he was interested in, see, yes. always uh, he digs and studies and then uh, he, you ask any plan, it seems so, uh, he I'm read about it. I'm going to ask and, you about the cockerels and about your actual, mm -hmm. your lecturing. I want to mention some of the other names that you've uh, you hold very dearly. You met talked about the Peaks, the Peak, William Peaks. Yes, E W A Peak, Will Peak, and Wanda Peak uh, were residents of Palm Springs before we came. Yes. In fact, uh, Andy Pearl uh, gave a party at the tennis club, and we talked. I forget what we talked on, but anyway. The peaks came up afterward, and that was the beginning of our, our acquaintance. And he was a very remarkable man. Uh, he bought the controlling interest of Consolidated Freightways, which was um, drooping and going downhill, and he built it into the second largest in the world. And he put much millions of his own money in it, but it was his driving spirit that was responsible. And I do know one thing, he gave $25,000 to the boys club here yes, in Palm Springs wonderful. once. And Mrs. Lyon, History. he was, we felt, a little bit tight. And she, Mrs. Lyon was always after him, Grace. And I always told him, him, are you going to take it with you? No, I asked him to, <laughs> to do a little more for charity. Yeah, well. Yeah. He had his right, own charities, as everyone does, and he was interested in uh, the blind. Yes, uh, he did a lot. And that was one of the things they were most charitable to. And then, but he was interested in the children. The Onus Wards. The Onus Wards are underrated couple. They were on the museum board, I believe before I came on. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Cockrell was responsible for my coming on the board. And both of the wards, Onus and Grace, were terrifically interested in the desert. And he was a professional photographer. He had a, a studio here. And uh, he and one of the last things which he did was to produce this beautiful uh, wildflower Desert Wildflower Book, uh, and it's one of the best color wildflower books that uh, I know of. Yes, do you want us to hold that up a little longer? Not yes, and you certainly would, would mm. know. Mm. Yeah. And uh, at the time I came on the board, or became president, uh, their ideas seemed to run contrary to uh, the majority of the 
uh, me, uh, mm-hmm. directors. Yes. So we would have a, something come up and I would have a hand vote so that they could express their opinion, which was usually opposite what the rest were, but they were probably right. They were more deeply, I, I think. So many of our others were more interested in art and music, which had become the best part of the museum today. But, but then at it, that it really time, we were a natural, natural history, history yes, museum. Which you knew and appreciated. Um, yes. Um, why don't we backtrack then a bit and talk about the cockerels? I wonder if we could get a little more comfortable chair. Are you comfortable? That's uh, that <laughs> that's uh, awfully uh, hard. <laughs> you became mm-hmm. interested and very active in the museum under the reign of the, the cockerels. Yes. Lloyd Mason Smith had gone to war. Yes. And uh, so they t- this old couple took over. They lived upstairs in Steve Willard's apartment mm-hmm. for free, and he was the Willards were very uh, civic minded. And now uh, would that be where Morton's Botanical Garden is? No, now? that mm-hmm. that was and that's upstairs. Um, this was near something the theater. Else yes, the, right, um, right near, yes. right near where the museum right. was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's there now. <laughs> Things have changed so much. Uh, no but uh, Mrs. Cockrell uh, was having a hard time running the museum. Uh, the professor was old. He was the the one who had the, his wa- the uh, husband. wonderful training, but yes. she was the spark she was the, the dynamo. Force. She that, was, must that, have been very yes, dynamic. And so she was she a was former biology teacher. Yes. So she was interested in the so desert. She was grabbing at anyone that could help her, and yes. I was interested in, in nature, yes. and so she would have me come down about five nights a week, talk to a little group, maybe 20 or 25 people. Now, where was the museum it, located? It was, um, at the first, it was in the library, mm-hmm. the children, yeah, and then it moved the into a Quonset hut next door. And that was the place where and I was. And is that where you lecture? Yes. In the Hut yes. and or in the children's That's right. wing of the mm-hmm. library, which became and the museum. And sometimes we showed uh, movies that we'd taken on the desert, right. and sometimes we just talked. And then... You also conducted hikes. You were... Yes, I imagine that was under her... Uh, program. Program, too, because yes. I don't remember uh, who, but I... Both Grace and I would take our favorite place was out almost to the bench in Palm Canyon, and then we went up a canyon to the left called uh, Hidden Canyon to Dripping Springs, and that was a beautiful, beautiful place. And yeah, we were wow. there once with a group when one of the severe earthquakes hit, <laughs> and there was a little concern <laughs> about uh, whether rocks might come tumbling loose. Were you here for the recent earthquake in July? Yes, were you we were. In Palm yes. Springs, both of you? Yeah, I Would you say that this was that was even more severe? Or? I think the one we had in July was more severe than any that we experienced here. But we lost a lot of uh, valuable Chinese oh, yeah. uh, dishes oh, on one which occurred many years ago, so I don't know... In the late 40s, I believe. Yeah, I don't know whether that was more severe or not. Yes, they did not not. keep records. The Paul Grimm, the artist, desert artist, had a little dog called Choya, and it so happened, every time an earthquake would shake the house over there, the little dog would run over to our house, and by that time, the quake was gone, (laughs) so she put two and two together, and any time it started quake, she would come tearing to our house. And usually, in the course, the, the quake was all done. She didn't have yes, all they these did houses. Have animals, yeah, yeah. Animals uh, we had once had a job. room full of of people that were some of them pretty uh, well known people here. We had two <laughs> California ringtails. We kept them out on the porch for a while. I love this story. And yeah. then we found. Would we, you explain what a California uh, ringtail well, is? It's a little animal. The body is about 18 inches, and the tail it would add another 14 Just or 15 like inches. Yeah. So it makes a 
the uh, size of a fox, only it wasn't as large as a fox. And they were your, you were and keeping we, them as Yes, as pets. We, uh, <laughs> uh, we let them loose upstairs and had a hole so they could go into the garage and they had their toilet up there and they never yeah, messed never, it up at all. It was in the garage, so it never yeah. bothered. And we could leave them here a week alone if we put water and a bunch of chicken mm. necks. And they didn't <laughs> hoard. They'd come and eat what they needed. What they at, need. uh, That's and all. Yeah, they were brother Very and well sister. Very well-mannered children. <laughs> they were brother and sister, and they uh, they respected each other. You know, they wouldn't. One was eating, the other wouldn't bother. No. Finally, the ma we sent them sometimes up to Arrowhead in the summer. Sometimes, once we sent them to Reno, to a very wealthy woman named Ludovica Diamond Graham. Probably Does that nice. ring a bell? <laughs> no. And uh, uh, she kept them in a huge monkey cage for us. And then one year, one summer, the male died up at Arrowhead. I had it mounted and gave it to the museum, but it was a terrible mount. Yeah. We have seen it occasionally, oh, but I, oh. I'm never proud of it. But the female, uh, she could go out, and so for a while, she would go out and come back and go out and come back. Finally, uh, she was seen uh, out the tennis club window that faces the mountain with a, some little ones. She came down there and was seen. That's the last you we heard You were going of them. to describe that you had. Do you remember the people who were gathered here when I, I assume oh. at certain points? Oh, the, they were gathered the for. The evening they would me, sort of these, appear. Yes, they would wind through these uh, spokes of this uh, railing. Yes. Then they would run out on here. Then they'd jump down <laughs> yeah. and go right through between people's legs. And some people screamed, you know. But they were harmless and they were beautiful. Well, this leads very nicely into your rattlesnake story. You also kept snakes on the porch. Rattlesnakes uh, were and our yes, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I married were, a funny man. <laughs> <laughs> rattlesnakes were our chief uh, hobby chief on the hour, desert. She says. I, he gives me credit. I'm listening. He, he, he gives me credit. We, we gathered uh, what one time we had 18. Cage on the porch, and we always counted them when we came home at night yeah, because we slept on the porch. And one Good night idea. we had 17. We missed one, and we hunted everywhere. We didn't know how we could have gotten out, but we hunted, and we couldn't find it. And so we went to bed out there. And next morning we released a 42-inch king snake. In five She's minutes we found that rattler, and I got the movie, full movie of him when he finally struck the rattler and head first and swallowed him and I pinched off the rattles just before <laughs> they went down. But Your neighbor, did you have neighbors? We had you? neighbors but we didn't brag <laughs> <laughs> about our snakes. We had one we ruber, brag. red diamondback, Crotalus ruber, a red diamondback was about oh, I think 30 that, inches oh, long. I thought we had no, I didn't. Oh. And um, we caught him up in um, the canyon above uh, one of these little towns, and they are not vicious. The the di uh, the uh, side runner is usually uh, short tempered. This snake, I caught him uh, barehanded, put him in a cloth, and tied him on a stick, and was going along. Suddenly, the cloth stick came up, and I looked, and the rattler was right at my feet, just uh, sticking his tongue out, but not not excited. So I caught him again, and we brought him home. But boy, uh, I worry. What, what, what has made you? Well, what did make you so at ease with animals? Certainly, growing up in Linesville, Pennsylvania. <laughs> no. You uh, were we killed a rattler once yeah. up while we were fire watchers up on Tacos Peak for one summer. Uh, we had some pet uh, chipmunks, and a big black diamond Pacific diamondback would come out, and he'd take our chipmunks. So. We killed that, and that's the last rattler I ever killed. But we, uh, when my brother and I hiked around the United States, once we woke up and we had a rattler in bed with us, and my brother wanted to kill it, but I said no, it didn't bite us. Let's let him go. That so is, we, those, when we had these eighteen rattlers, uh, n nobody wanted them. That is, the museum didn't need them. 
So we took them out and let them go in the places where we would found them. And some uh, famous people have been out rattle hunting, the Giannini's, the oh, yes. banker and his wife and yes. daughters. Yeah. And there's a very famous man, I can't recall his name. Uh, what, what was he? Uh, the museum told me that he wanted us to, he had written a book in his autobiography, and he was a Frenchman maybe, because he later was in France, you know, and they, he wanted to go out and catch a rattlesnake, but uh, to know to put in his book uh, that he had being on the desert, he thought that was necessary. So I told him, well, we'd call him one some night when we felt it was right. Well, I when the night came, it has to be a warm night. Uh, I called him, and he was in Paris, so we oh, never did uh, go. Missed uh, the opportunity. Yes, yeah. but uh, we've had other famous people out. Rattle, oh, I know one. Famous uh, people lost the mind. Yeah. They love the rattlesnakes. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, people are fascinated. The president of the University of Michigan. Understands yeah. the way. Uh, a herpetologist, and he came, spent a week at El Mirador just to catch a sidewinder, and he never did. And so we took him two huge sidewinders, 30 inches is long for a sidewinder. And one of them had 16 rattles, oh, no. which is seldom does they break off, you know. Yes. But we took wow. him those, and he and his wife got down in front of the cage in their living room on their knees like kids to yeah. see those rattlesnakes. Well, so, you don't certainly with the development now. One no, does they're not less see. and less. There used to be snakes caught frequently right here in Palm Springs yes. in the houses. Yes. Yes. Two story. doors down, a little rattler sidewinder was in their house, and the woman called the police and five policemen finally came to get that little rattler out there. <laughs> but uh, this we found. We used to hunt at night, but it was too dangerous because you're on a highway. The rattlers come out on the pavement. The night begins to cool. They come out on that warm macadam. But your other cars are passing Absolutely. and it's too dangerous. So we quit it. Uh, the, uh, you, were you ever bitten? No. I've caught quite a few by I hand. Yeah, but he, said, he said, uh, uh, just to learn to respect. <laughs> yeah, we respect them. Well, yeah, don't too, yeah, don't get too, yeah, don't get too, you know. Harold thinker. Hicks and I were up above Snow Creek once, and I caught a pretty good sized rattler, and we had nothing to carry it in. So I carried it for about two miles back, and then he got a pillowcase and put it in that. But uh, we found this then, a safer way. You did a way. lot of hiking, I don't mean to yes. interrupt you, with, with Harold. With Harold, yes. yes. He, we used Who to hike also, up of course, appreciated the, the desert. And yes, we, yes. Uh, he and I and his girlfriend, Mary, they weren't married yet, hiked up to the lower side of Keys View, and then we hiked up a very steep ridge, and we got right to the top where there were people looking out, and they were astonished to see anybody, because not yes. supposed to be anybody down there. But one thing, we found out how to hunt rattles safely. We go out just after daybreak, before the sun got up, and we'd pick up a rattler, a sidewinder trail, and we'd track him from one bush to another, and finally, uh, he'd, we didn't find any trail leaving a bush, then we knew he was there, and we'd carefully look, and usually just his horns and his eyes would be out, he'd get wiggled down in the sand, Hi. and we had a stick, uh, and the only dangerous part of it was putting a snake in the bag, and Mrs. Lyon always held the bag, that was the only danger part. <laughs> you <laughs> no. two were really a team, no. weren't you? <laughs> Sometimes we'd dig the snakes out with a shovel, and that was danger, because uh, and we were digging here. And to observe them, and observe them, yes, and we put just them on display for well, people to give understand. A, yeah, yeah. Give a, gave them to, to medium. Do you know, Bill, uh, the former head of uh, San Diego Power and Light, uh, he was a herpetologist. Frank Crawford. Pardon? Frank Crawford? No, he was a herpetologist in San Diego. San Diego. Uh, he, he would come here occasionally, and he yeah. taught us how to hunt rattlesnakes. I wanted to ask you about, you were uh, at, uh, on the board of the museum, you were a trustee and you were eventually president of the board. 
You were uh, very involved at the time when the museum was considering uh, the reserve, and you were very involved with Phil Boyd in by purchasing an area of land to preserve such animals as rattlesnakes. And it was all Phil's idea, and Mr. I was Boyd, involved yes. just because I was the president mm -hmm. of the museum at that time, and uh, Phil uh, wanted to have us sponsor it, and as I mentioned, he and yes. I went down to the Coachella Water Company and got the lease uh, free, or almost free, and uh, Phil wanted to put money in it, but he was willing to use his own money, but we ran into a little problem. Francis Crocker said nothing doing. Phil, was My just, bit <laughs> Phil had quite a bit of valuable land down in that area, and he said that uh, uh, Phil was, Francis thought Phil was using us, you know, just mm -hmm. to further his own ends. But, uh, as I told him, uh, even if it did help Phil, we were benefiting, the museum was, but Francis had a strong ideas about it, so he said, over my dead body we'll We'll do that. So uh, he came to the house here one day and <laughs> uh, bowed and presented his resignation mm -hmm. from as, as treasurer. He said, I yes. don't get me wrong, I'm not re resigning from the board, yes. just as treasurer because of this deal. Yes. And I smiled and bowed and accepted. No, I accept it. And yeah. we've been good <laughs> friends ever since, Certainly. but every once in a while he would make us a lot of trouble and then uh, Grace would. Uh, be outside waiting for us to get out of a meeting. We had lots of meetings here. Uh, and uh, Francis say, well, I just threw a lot of mud into the pool <laughs> just to watch them squirm around. Uh, that is meaning well, the rest of the boy. Well, he was very far-sighted on some things, but this yes. was one Yes, and Grace said he, he ought to be ashamed of himself. Well, we've always been good friends. Yes. <laughs> well, well uh, the, the, of course, the, the... He probably had ideas. I mean, his own ideas, I'm sure. The, the so point, really, of the story is that the Living Desert Reserve was, was developed. born and, and developed, and, and Phil, yes. uh, it never cost the museum anything. Phil, with his own money, yeah. did the things to start it, and then it finally became such a vigorous child that we had to, to uh, give it its own freedom. Yes, yes. Divorce it from the museum. Yes, and of course it's a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. a very necessary part of the, yes. the valley, and uh, this, yeah, I, I don't imagine he Great should be is comfortable. All right. uh, do you do you want, tell you. Do you want, would you like no. to take a break? No, she's no, no, just no, worried no. that, uh, well, we, that we, we, he's we, a sitting, are you all right? This is what we do. <laughs> before we leave the, the museum, I think this is a, a nice picture, an early picture of uh, the board at the time, and I think if we Zoom, perhaps zoom in on some of these people and well here's Earl Kaufman and Ernie Osshuler who was a very good friend of yours yes. would this be an early 50s picture yes yes early 50s mm -hmm. and Corrine Marcuse yes Dolly as she Dolly was Marcuse yes. and Stan Rosine Dr. McCauley mm -hmm. and Mrs. Armstrong Will Dean, Mrs. Snyder, and, and yours truly. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I no. think that's a nice picture. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you'll find their names in this book many times because we yes, held meetings you, here. You, and this is where the, uh, certainly the museum that ended up being on Topwoods McCallum was born, yes, and, we, born and bred. We uh, got the start here, but and we raised at one of these meetings, we raised twenty-five thousand dollars, and uh, and I guess I told you that Dolly Marcus said, uh, "Mr. Line, I uh, love to give money, but I would rather be able to work too." Yeah. She didn't want to just sit around. She wanted to give everything she, she was had. Quite. And a eventually, she left a very large sum oh, yes. to the museum. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we will. You've had many, many interests over the years. One of the fascinating interests, of course, has been flying. 
and both you and Grace have pilot's licenses, and you, you started, how did, did you start flying well, he, in the, he, in the he, desert? No, he was, uh, he was a teaching uh, Army Navy. Oh, well, free. that was, I didn't start you know. teaching Army Navy, no. Uh, yeah, I used did. to see the planes go over our house, and I was already too old, they said, to learn to fly, I was about 31. <laughs> and, I <laughs> and I said, well, uh, someday I'm going to, going to uh, learn to fly. So I began watching the uh, instruments on the car more accurately yes, and watching sure, them. Certainly. And every time I get hold of a hundred dollar bill, I stick it in a separate place, you know, to buy a plane. <laughs> but I, I uh, sped over a year or more learning to fly. We just uh, drive down to the airport, which is about 40 miles from our home, take a 15, 20 minute lesson, so it went kind of slowly. Well, this was in Michigan you're talking in about. In Michigan, yes. Where did you, where did you fly here? Uh, out of the, well, was it, well it we would have, have kept, been the Army. We have kept our plane here at Palm Springs. Yes, but Some when you the were first flying out of the desert, where was the airport? Well, the airport was where it is now, but it's changed a lot. Yes. But one of the hangars where we used to keep our plane some of the time is still there. We also kept it down at thermals some you of the see, time. see, we had our own plane then, Yes. Uh, after he got licensed. This marvelous huh? picture uh, of 1949 is with you and Aldous Huxley and yes. his first wife. Maria. And this is Mrs. Wanted. Colonel, Mrs. O'Reilly, Colonel O'Reilly's. Yeah, too bad uh, she died, wife. too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that uh, looks like at night, but I tell people it was taken on the moon, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't quite true. Yeah. Uh, it was, it, it was the uh, lighting. We, now, Aldous Huxley must be close to six feet six, and the Balanca, the plane I had here at the time, is very compact. And how he and ever curled long. up those long legs and got in there, but he said he was enjoyed it. We were almost an hour flying over the Coachella and Imperial Valleys, and, and you were lectured as you flew. You described yeah, three the, the, the and desert. we flew below sea level some of the time, you know, over the sand dunes down near Yuma. We were flying hedge hopping yeah, over the sea, me. over the sand dunes, and I we were below scared. sea level. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but they enjoyed it. But uh, I told Grace when we got home that a man of his stature should know better than to get into a plane he didn't know wow. with a pilot he didn't know. Actually, when lucky. you think about it. He was very lucky, yes, that you were Yeah, I actually, I wouldn't get into a plane with somebody I Don't know. didn't know very well. Yes, I understand. Yeah. understand that. Who was your most famous local celebrity whom you taught to fly? Oh, Zaddy Bunker. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zaddy Bunker. Well, now, she went to, we had to take a trip to Washington, D.C. and New York City. We had uh, a lot of uh, shelite, tungsten. We had asbestos. That's the country that had. Her yeah. cousin in Korea had, he had stockpiled a couple million dollars worth of shelite. And we knew the United States should need it, tungsten. So we agreed to try to sell it for him. And so we had to make this trip, and I asked Zaddy if she would like to go. She said, yes, I sure would, but I got a date with Cary Grant. Mm -hmm. So I told her, well, I had a date with Lana Turner, but <laughs> I was going to break it. But she did have a date with Cary Grant to sell him some property. But she arranged to break that date, and so we wanted to show her as much of the country as we could, so we went through 23 states in just going to Washington and New York and back. And Zaddy was very interested in flying, so I let her fly a lot of the time and navigate. And when we got home, she said, uh, I want to learn to fly. And I had an instructor's rating, but I didn't want to teach her. So she went to some other local friends who had instructors and no one wanted to teach her. She was a little rattle-headed and we didn't want to be responsible. So she went down to Tri-City, uh, yeah. San Bernardino, and she got her private license when she was 63. 
She got a multiple engine when she was 65. She oh, flew a jet sorry. through the sound barrier when she was 70. And she flew a single engine plane to Northport, Michigan to visit us when she was 75. So that's the type of pilot she was. There was a 200 and how you many started miles? it all. The line started it all. And Grace, you no, I, th I think I think she started him. <laughs> oh, it could be. <laughs> no, could Grace be. Well, then uh, never wanted to learn to fly. No, but I tried sudden, to discourage you. She realized you. I she was had scared. a. A plane and an instructor, which would cost her nothing. <laughs> yeah. So she decided when she was 56 years old, so she wanted to learn to fly. And even Zaddy never inspired her to do that. So I started to teach her, but I found right away we was going to break up our happy family. Because when you're you can't say, dear, please raise your nose, I, I'd say, get your nose up. and. And she said, "You take it." So <laughs> we went to. Yes, you have to have. Somebody, yeah, we went, we went a to, neutral party to do an those. island off the coast of New of uh, Massachusetts. What is it? Uh, Famous island, anyway. Yeah. Uh, we went there. Newfoundland. Martha's Vineyard. Oh, Martha's Vineyard. And yeah. uh, there was a little airport, and we got a very good instructor named Gentle, and he was very gentle. Yeah, and I told him that. He taught Grace to fly in our airplane, and but he couldn't it. solo her because there was a hurricane. Uh, he just didn't dare solo her, so we had to leave and we got home. I said, all right, I'll solo you then. But uh, I said, we'll go around a couple of times, and we did, and I said, you aren't, you ready. may be ready, but you weren't fit. So <laughs> we took uh, two you got days to like off, it to fit. <laughs> and we went to Upper Michigan and just rested. We came back. And got in again. She went around with me in, and I said, "You're all right." And got out, and I took a movie of her, and the autumn, the beautiful leaves, and she took off. Boy, now I couldn't do that. You got your license in your your pilot's license in your fifties. Yeah, That's she got it remarkable. when she was fifty-six. Yes. Remarkable. Yeah. Fran Barra. We found her. Fran Barra's name in the woman that gave her the license. On yeah, that net. she was the same lady. Well, let's talk a little bit about the present and the future. Uh, you have supported Korean, promising Korean children yes, over the years, and many of them you've brought over to this country, to California, and many of their families, and you have wonderful snapshot mm -hmm. there of, of your, your, the children whom you've supported, and that has kept you busy mm -hmm. over the years, uh, as w along with all the One thing that we spend a good deal of our years doing, we had a foundation, we called it Song Lion mm -hmm. Foundation, and it was dedicated to aiding Korean education, mm -hmm. but we also did a lot for orphans, and we have, uh, through churches here, cooperating in getting materials. We'd, once we sent maybe three or four hundred pairs of shoes, Children's but that shoes. wasn't a, too good a thing because they would rather wear rubber shoes yeah. there. But it may have helped. But uh, we'd get the they were the churches and the, the husbands in the church would help wrap stuff, and so for. A while yes, we a were to make a supporting yeah. uh, quite a number of orphanages. Yeah. Yeah, you no, go wait, ahead. You're, you're wired. Uh, you're wired up here. Can we get? Uh, is there a picture that you wanted to I, I thought, show? Uh, or I might have it somewhere. Well, yeah. now here's here's this is one of the schools. Yeah. That Th this uh, this lady is a. Where is Miss Principal. Yeah, Mrs. principal. Uh, yeah. Principal of a boys. See, yeah, she yes, was. She was. In, she was in prison two years by Japanese. See, Japanese uh, realize the education and Christianity is in their way. You see, they wanted to control. Of course. And which uh, and Korea had the four thousand seven hundred years of history. Mm -hmm. You just cannot do that. Can't and so. Uh, Practically all the teachers, including myself, uh, you know, we called it 
not jail. It's an honorary school. We graduated. Yeah. That is wonderful. Well, you are still interested in the desert. You both travel by Jeep and explore, and you bought a new oh. house in Pioneer Town, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. where, where you mm. frequently go, and you're still going out into the desert and exploring. And we were there yesterday, and we went out in the Jeep, and we we went up a road that uh, we have to get out and look ahead how we're going to get through. There are quite a bit of roads like that up in these canyons. Uh, I'm not yeah. very good, um, good one, you know. Uh, but uh, she's never afraid. Well, she never I think objects. The two of you have <laughs> no, done such courageous, no, no. courageous things. I see either that or I lose your, my husband. Your, 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 your <laughs> so explorer, I just follow your him around. And, yeah. and, and you continue to do find it necessary to get out of Palm Springs because it has developed well actually time. we I shouldn't do the Palm Springs have been very good to us but it's changed and of not course. always for the better of, of course, course the way some people yeah. think at least and we are used to having uh, we're s loners we go out in a jeep we don't have another jeep following yes. us which is a bad idea we're always alone, and if anything really happens that we can't handle, we'd be in deep trouble. Yeah. But that's that's our but nature, he, I guess. But he's very wise, and, and oh, yes, had the right. experience, so he knows uh, whether we should or we shouldn't. Yes. See. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps you will give all of us at the library a call every time you go out on an adventure, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can keep track of you. This has been most interesting. And you have contributed a great deal, not only to Palm Springs, but obviously to other cultures in different parts of the world. We thank, thank you very much for thank today. You. Well, I think uh, Palm Springs and and uh, all the organizations they have done more for us oh, than we well, ever hoped to. Mm -hmm. I think it's an equal uh, yes, arrangement. Uh, an equal uh, arrangement. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, this uh, has been wonderful to have you so long. <laughs> I, my and pleasure. I've enjoyed it. Uh, I've enjoyed it tremendously, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have lots of the memorabilia that you gave me autographed by you both. <laughs> <laughs>